Hallelujah. Amen. We thank the Lord this morning and we give him praise for each and every one of us. And we continue with the teachings of the master in the master class 2022. Let's pray. Father, we bless you, we worship you. We pray you speak to us through your word this morning. Open our eyes and um, give us the grace to learn and to do the way you did it. We give you praise in Yeshua Jesus' name. We pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So this morning we want to look at the diversity of Christ's messages. Um, what he preached and how and then the, um, the essentials and the on the on the critical issues of life so how did jesus and um, what was his speeches how did he relate to people what was the messages and the patterns because he's a creator and it's good that we learn from him amen we learn from him he knows the best solution to everything. He knows the right word to say. He knows how to do it. He knows when to use water to wash. He knows when to add soap, what quantity. He knows when not to use water, but to use other substances to clean that, um, whatever, um, the stain. So he knows the best balm to suit, you know, that pain. So we want to learn from him and then intently please pay attention to the few examples we're going to um, give this morning because we don't want to miss the mark. So we go back to the scriptures, amen, to do it exactly the way he did it and also to ask him of wisdom and also ask the Holy Spirit to be with us and then to help us. Um, we don't want to do more than he did or less than he did or add hours and remove some. Uh, we just want to keep to the way he did it. Um, not that we're going to say exactly, but we will learn. Amen. So we can see from the examples we're going to give this morning that the, exam the messages of our Lord Jesus was well balanced. Meeting the need in every situation was very appropriate the people understood he didn't speak over their head and at the same time he didn't say things they didn't they couldn't understand or he was um, coming so low that they looked down on him at one point when people were sent to come and arrest him in John 7 and they stayed back and they listened when they got back to those that sent to them they said what what is this when we got there, we got stalked. We've never had any man speak such wisdom. Amen. May that be you and may that be me. May we learn. Say, I have never had. This should be our prayer. This should be um, what we long for, what we desire, what we fast, and then what we ask for. Lord, we want to do it your way. See, um, it was the people were stunned. And they couldn't believe it. They stay back and head him through. So the mission they came for, they couldn't carry it out anymore. And so we don't want to tilt to one side when we are speaking the words of Elohim. So it should all be a learning from all of us. So, so let's follow his example. And the Bible says in Matthew 10 25 to 27 that it is meet that a servant become like his master amen if so that's what we want to get out there it is me that when we speak may people hear jesus through us may they get the wisdom of christ through us may we not miss the mark amen the messages he preached that got the four thousands and the four thousand and the five thousand to stay with him for days. May he give us the grace that when we speak also, nobody will speak, nobody will listen or hear or read and remain the same. That people will want to hear again. That's our prayer. So um do we see where he balanced it? 
some places he was so calm he was so quiet and some places he was so direct very direct we need that wisdom so don't just rebuke only when you are preaching you will put men in fear and they will feel insecure if only what you preach is fire brimstone blame them this happened to you this and all that um they'll feel very insecure you know they wouldn't know what to do you would destabilize them and they will lose their esteem when it's all hot 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 no it wasn't that way at the same time don't only go on sweet words men will indulge and justify themselves in their sins if you do that oh god will bless you oh you're a champion you are the best it's okay they are but if that's only what you're giving them um, they'll be standing on one leg and you know what that means it means they'll, they'll be easily pushed down so you give them license to do whatever and harden their heart to the word hence making them twice the children of hell so both extremes are not balanced at all given the message where people are okay and relaxing their sin or going to the far right of getting everyone so apprehensive and standing on edge when they come to church no um both will not really work but when used appropriately and situations like we're going to see the examples um it will be good amen paul said to timothy in the book of second timothy chapter 4 1 to 4 he says to him i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season out of season rebuke Reproof, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure. Paul says so. Same thing to um, Timothy. When you're talking, add rebuke, and when you've rebuked, reproof, at the same time, exalt the people. Amen. With all long suffering, with gentility, let your word be seasoned with grace. So, we can see in our Lord messages, they were very relative. So there were relativity in all he did. Because the people in the crowd were diverse. The Bible says people from all nations and tribe came in that three and a half years to Israel to hear the Lord. So it was great multitude. And when you're trying to analyze a multitude, well, you can carry on um, to see the diverse you don't need to spend that much looking at their faces you could see different races listening to their languages you will know looking at the way they dress you will know their different backgrounds and where they're coming and if you engage them in conversation then if you want to do um the analysis get on with your pen and paper and see if you can get through the five thousand fifteen thousand and then innumerable people that number that followed our lord you if you have that time carry on but you can see that there were people from different nations so what is the example he spoke look at his messages he knew the farmers were there and in the parables he says the sower went to sow so that made sense because those days farming is something everybody can relate with it's everything it's not now that we have robots and then technologies that does things children are all in the cities with um what do you call it now with all their lights and with all the and uh, they have no clue some children born in the city have have not even seen um any plant grow in their lifetime they don't know what it is they don't even know what it means to be in the farm, especially the poorer ones in the cities. So they've not traveled out to visit a farm or to know what things are going on. But in the time of our Lord Jesus, farming was what everybody can identify. 
So in the parable of the sower, the sower went to sow. He caught a patch of the crowd quickly. They understood. So while in your congregation you are preaching or you are out on evangelism, who are you talking to? Do you know the person you're talking to? Could you quickly speak what the person or see what the person can understand? Don't speak over their head. There are some languages some will identify with and there are some that will not make any meaning but the Lord give us the grace. The sower, they were farmers. Those, his messages were diverse. The merchant men. So to the merchants, because people were traveling from Mesopotamia, coming to um, trade in Joppa, in Jerusalem, and all walks of life, he knew there were merchant men in the many coming to lesson. He knew there were the, the rich, the centurions were there. A lot of traders and money making people tax collectors, the bankers of those days, they were there. So what happened? He used the, says, a, the kingdom of God is like a merchant man. Mm. They picked it, the message quickly. It sunk in. It made sense. The parable of the pearl, the goodly pearl. So all the traders and all the entrepreneurs or traders, but petty trading and international and the Bologna traders, they understood quickly what he meant by going seeing a priceless pearl sold all. And for the in, in intellectuals standing before him there, probably the likes of Paul, there are those who studied under Gamaliel and then those who are talented and then um, the big brains among us that we haunt the parable of the talent. So he ministered both to everyone. Look at the relativity. And to the women in the crowd. Yeah, he's talked about farming, but there's something that will resonate with the women which were quite very large in that crowd. A lot of their numbers, he sees, and in the kingdom of God, is like a woman who lost her coin. We know what, <laughs> amen. He knows what it looks like to look for your child socks, and you're about to go. Every woman, you know what I'm talking about. You turn the seats upside down, you're looking for one socks, or you get into the kitchen and you're looking for one particular spatula. Oh dear, you pull out all the drawers. You know, we women, we know how to look for things. He knows when you lose that coin. Women know what it is. To lose it then means a lot. You have a family to feed. You have the children. You have things to buy. We don't joke with losing our money. The men can lose their money and they get off. But when a woman goes, you, you light a candle, turn everything. It makes sense to them. May our messages make sense to those we are talking to. Amen. Make it make sense. Don't speak over people's head. Make it lively. And to the children in the crowd, he knows. The Bible says the heart of a child is filled with foolishness. That was all. The disobedient and all that's doing their own thing. The parable of the prodigal son. Oh, the children could understand. Yeah, I know when I <clears throat> that tells me to do things and I'm like, ah. So those little things we see in the attitude of children. The parable of the two sons. Every young person there will pick it up. You see how his, the messages, his messages were touching everyone in the crowd. The parable of the two sons will make much meaning to the, all the um, young adults and all the teenagers in the crowd. To the rich the parable of the Lazarus and the rich man. I'm sure they know all of them who were there, who are employ employers um, of labor, those who own all the big things and then who all the big houses and on the Lamborghini of Christ time and the jets and the private estates and then not really caring for the poor, poor and the behood around them. 
he used that. To the nobles who came to hear, because there were people, quite a lot. We know there were quite a lot of nobles, like um, Jairus, when Jesus went to his house to, you know, get his daughter up. These are the nobles that came, like the centurion that says, I'm a man under authority. I'm a man that people are under me, and I'm also under it. Authority. I tell them what to do and they do, but don't come to my house, speak the word. There were nobles that were. So to the nobles, he had the invitation to the king's supper. That's the kind of um, um, parties they go to. They are invited to all the big parties where they go to the presidents, to the prime ministers, to the kings and the chiefs and then whatever of the nations he used. The parable of the invitation to the king's supper, it made sense to them. To the presumptuous, those who are nowhere in the crowd, the parable of the ten virgins made sense. And then there were those who were servants there in the team, the servants who can say, oh, talk to them, speak to them. They know what they are doing. Yeah, Jesus, talk to them. He says, no, you also included. To the servants, the, the parable of the unjust steward, those servants who cheat at work, who steal the things of their employers, who don't go to work early, and those who play pranks, those days, those who are asked to look after the extent of their masters and they misappropriate it the unjust steward to the self-righteous the religious in the group there were really those who were born again in 1900 who are still in church they they have all the positions in the church they've been deacons, pastors overseers they've been choir masters, they've been everything and yet we can't see it in their lives the parable of the pharisee and the publican Mm, I'm sure that touched them. The holier than thou set of people. Do you know them at church? Ah, they come in, they take the big seats. Before you say John 3.16, they've quoted it. If you said, can we read Matthew chapter 4? Mm, they get on to start reading it without looking into their Bible. The religious, yet their lifestyle. Mm -mm, it's not there yet. The Pharisee and the publican. To keep them at bay to quieten them so that they learn not to be self-righteous to the unforgiven sitting there says mm, he's talking about the big things but there are things that creep around the heart that nobody can see only me sees it the parable of the unmerciful servant and then to the doctors and the lawyers who were with him he said such words of wisdom that routed them so Ministers of the Lord, who are, who, those who are listening, those who are in training in the master class, this should be our prayer. Amen. My prayer, your prayer. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, help me so that my message doesn't stand on one leg. You go to some churches, it's all about money, 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 money. Where is salvation? Where is of wisdom and the power of Elohim. What about the victorious Christian life? You go to another church, all oh, they talk about hell, 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 hell. What about the liberty we enjoy in Christ Jesus? You go to another church, it's all about, oh, you must dress this way, it must be holy unto the Lord. Hey, come on. Balance your message. There are so many people at church reach out to everyone in some of his messages um christ really have some sense of humor <laughs> very good humor i can't really in luke chapter 14 8 you can read it and you will not laugh so many things so as you're reading through matthew mark luke and john I, what you'll be doing your facial ex expressions will be saying it some you're laughing some you're like ah some you're like hmm some your intent your face will tell it all 
Jesus said in Luke 14, 8, When thou art bidding of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidding of him, and you are asked to go. <laughs> Walk from the front seat, from the chief chair you gave to yourself, and you are demoted, and everybody is watching you, being humiliated down to the lowest seat. Very, is quite very humorous. So don't let the message look so... Get people to relate with what you are talking about and feel relaxed. And when they go, they can say, yeah, I got the message. I got the message. Hallelujah. Some messages were convenient, very convenient, quite very convenient messages. Looking good. You can preach on them for the rest of your life. And then all the be of good chairs, they will make they will light lighten up your spirit. I have overcome the world. They will give you strength. Thy sins be forgiven. Be not afraid. They are boosters. Amen. Very good ones. Mark 6 50 says, For they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good chair. That's good message to preach, to carry on. That's the word of our Lord. Yeshua, Matthew 5, 1 to 8 is all the blessed, 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 blessed. Blessed are you, blessed are you, blessed are those, blessed are those. They're good messages. They, they get us going. Amen. They bring smiles. They encourage us. There are compassions and healings and provisions he made. Hallelujah. There were commendations. He commended his disciples in Matthew 16, 17. Um, he commended Peter when he said to Peter, it's not men that revealed this to you. He commended him in such wisdom. So please commend the people. Get, commend the brothers, commend the sisters, the children. Oh, well done. That message today was awesome. It really ministered to me. They are going to, wow, my overseer said my message. But in the first place, do you give them time and chance to speak? Hmm. I hope we do so. Allow them. There are certain things God has put in the people. Don't monopolize. Don't be everywhere. Allow them. Sit down and listen. The grace of God in their lives and commend them. The Lord did it. He commended. So there were commendations in his speeches. There were good words of consolation in John 14 1. In my father's house are many mansions. So he was encouraging the disciples, <laughs> although we are going all about, you know, not having any a certain place we call our own. Ultimately, the end of it all, you are going to live in mansions. That's giving them hope to carry on. May we give people hope to carry on. Amen. In Matthew 19, 28, Jesus said to his disciples, Verily I say it unto you, you who had followed me in the regeneration to come. Let people know there is there is real reward in serving the Lord. Don't let them feel despondent and then um, give up thinking, oh, it's all hardship. No, let them know what they've signed up for. It's great in the future. Balance it. Amen. John 14, if you read through, it's so sweet. Very sweet place to read. It's very comforting. I will send the comforter. Greater works will you do. If you ask anything in my name, I will not leave you comfortless. It just go through that chapter. Very beautiful. So, hope comes. And we get energized to carry on. The words like you will not lose your reward. Words like you tread upon serpents and scorpions. They are good words to keep us going. Whatever you decree here on earth, in Matthew 18, 18 and 19, giving us authority, amen, against principalities and powers. And in Mark eleven twenty three, it says, For verily I say unto you that what say, who say I shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, it shall be so, amen, if we believe. So all the miracles and salvation messages. At the same time, some messages were not that um, <laughs> convenient. Not at all. 
They came up like bang, bang, bang. It did. If we read the book of John chapter 6, most of the things said there, those who were listening got offended. Hey, what does he mean? You eat my flesh, drink my blood. That's an hard saying. Who does he think he is? This man is proud and arrogant. How can he say such thing? They got offended. They murmured about what he said. So some messages of some, yeah, could be quite very hard that people may not like it. But does it mean we keep our mouth shut? No way. Balance it. Matthew 16, 6 to 10, he says to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. He didn't say they are here. I don't want to get them offended. So let me just not say things. No, he spoke the truth. He said enough of comfort things that when they had ones are coming, people will know that really. That's true. It needs to be balanced. But that's true. One minute he was commending all of you, saying good things. So you don't expect him to keep quiet at things that are not right. So when you balance things, people will take off from you because they know you don't tilt things to one side. They know you're balanced. They know you are talking to everyone for the benefit of all. When he came to the time of Peter in Matthew chapter 16, he rebuked Peter. Satan, get thee behind me. Because it wasn't about Peter. It was about the Spirit speaking through him. Let's speak the word. Balance it. So, some were not convenient at all. Matthew 10 from verse 31 down to 39. And then he says some things again. And he says, unless whosoever that shall confess me before men, that will I confess before my father. But anyone that denies me, I will deny you. I would say, depart from me, I don't know you. And he says, for I came to set a man at variance. Those were hard words. That's serious time. So brethren, let's when it's serious time, let's also know when to rub grease at the elbows of people. Let's learn to balance it out. In John 3, 16, he was very blunt. In John 3, sorry, 6 and 7, he was very blunt to Nicodemus who came to commend him and then tell him, he says, yes, thank you, Nicodemus, but I must tell you the truth. Unless you be born again, you can enter the kingdom of God. Thank you for the good words that you need to know the right thing. Let's do it, brethren. It will help the people. People came, People go to hospital to get healed. They don't get there for you to tell them, oh, you go, it's all right. They need some medications. They need some investigations. They need some things, some surgical intervention. That's it. So know when people are in the party and give them all the party food. And also know when they have come to the hospital that that disease condition may be dealt with. Amen. I hope we understand what I'm saying now. So no, <laughs> when you call them to a banquet, please set out all the good food and all your good drinks and give them a merry play music to them. That's okay. Also know when they are there for great business and talk business and give them what they want. And then he said to the young man, go and then sell all you have. That was an hard saying. How can you tell a young man, give away all you have and come back and follow me? But Jesus had to do that to him. To the religious there who were also talking, he says, look, don't put away your wife in Matthew 19. You can't. It's not allowed. What well, did he sort it out? It's all right. God made them male and female. Such messages, people don't like to hear it at churches because they want to go on on first, second, third, five, six, whatever. Partners. Now, Jesus was very blunt to tell them. And then Matthew chapter 23, he dedicated it to the scribes and Pharisees and their bad behaviors and their bad lifestyle and attitude. He really spoke to them. May the good Lord help us to balance our message. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for um, sharing and speaking to us through your word to balance our message, to know 
when to say a particular thing, the situation, the circumstance, and to deliver the right one at the right time. Help us to balance it, that we don't tilt on one side, not too far right and too far left, but to make sure we communicate to people who are listening. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.